Okay, hello, welcome to uh, hopefully a little shorter video this time about argument mapping. This is an easy uh, chapter, there is not uh, very much to say about this after you've understood the basic idea of it and you already we already have talked about uh, how to analyze arguments and how to find the premises and the conclusion and, and what a valid argument is and so on. And if you have understood these things, then it's easy to map an argument, right? Um, it's just a kind of graphic that you make in order to show the structure of an argument, okay? So, uh, the purpose of argument mapping is to show the structure, like I just said, right, more clearly, and to help identify premises, intermediate conclusions, and the final ultimate conclusions. And sometimes this can be difficult when the argument is complex and you have it only in text form. It can be confusing to see where, where the parts are, and so then you would... Uh, paint it, you would draw it uh, in a little map, and this will make it more uh, clear how the thing is structured. Um, so you can understand the structure of the argument better. Okay, It's just a tool, it's like a Venn diagram, which is a graphic tool to make you understand more easily the structure of a syllogism. Here you have a graphic tool to understand the structure of, more generally, of an argument. It has been shown in studies to improve critical thinking skills, so obviously um, many students uh, find this useful. Uh, but, you know, human brains are different, so some people react better to text uh, and, and learn better from text. Some people learn better from uh, pictures. Um, so if you feel that um, you don't need that, then it is also fine, right? I mean, still you would need to learn it for this course, but... Um, you know, the idea is not that everybody has to uh, appreciate these different tools in the same way, right? Some people think more formally. For them, it is easier to see something in a natural deduction style. Uh, some people think more in language. For them, it's perhaps easier to read the argument in text form. Uh, and for others, it will be easier in a graphic uh, display, right? So just use whatever uh, makes it easier for you to understand an argument. So there are many different ways one can use to map arguments, um, obviously. Uh, so just writing a thing down and connecting boxes with arrows can be done in many ways. Uh, we will discuss three. The one is the argument mapping style discussed in the HKU Think resource, which is the um, thing we are supposed to use for this class. The standard diagram style um, presented by Reed and Rove, which uh, I, will, I will show you in a moment how it looks and a more or less, uh, a more loose, less formal mind map style approach to real world debates, which I like to use for debates uh, and is not so um, detailed and not so formal, but it's easier to use when you just want to collect a few arguments for a debate. So the main basic idea is that each proposition, premise or conclusion is numbered this is a little similar to natural deduction, right, where you number your statements. The numbers are arranged in a specific way on the page, connected by arrows. So here is different. Now you take the numbered statements and you arrange them in a map. And we number them in order to not fill the map with text, right? You could just write directly the arguments and connect them with arrows. But then you have a um, graphic that is, becomes huge because you have all the text in there. This is why you number them first, so that you draw only... Uh, the connections between uh, simple numbers and you get a much smaller diagram that is easier to see. And each arrow is a logical inference. It's a conclusion, right? Points from the premises towards the conclusion. So a standard diagram would have three kinds of elements. It would have dependent premises or co-premises. These are two premises that both need to be true in order to derive a conclusion, right? So this is a an end, logical end between the premises. Then you have independent premises. Each premise stands on its own and supports a conclusion. This would be a logical or between the premises, right? Premise alone can lead to a conclusion. And then you have intermediate or sub-conclusions. We already talked about those, right? Conclusions that are used as premises for another conclusion further down the argument. And with these three elements, you can construct your argument with and, or, and sub-conclusions. So here is how co-premises look. Both have to be true in order to support the conclusion. Then you would write 1 plus 2. This expresses the idea of the end, right? And this leads to 
three. So one needs to be true and two needs to be true and together they support conclusion three. Here we have an example where the statements two, three, and four support the conclusion independently. So now this is a kind of an or between the premises, right? Two supports one, three supports one, four supports one. You don't need them to be together. Here's the difference, right? One plus two and then a line means that these only work together as a unit to support three. Here, each one has its own arrow towards the conclusion. And then you have sub-conclusions. This would look like this, just sequences of arrows. So two supports one, three supports one, but five supports four, and four supports one. So four is an intermediate conclusion that is supported by the premise five and leads to the ultimate conclusion, one. Okay. Here we have a slightly different style uh, again, how to depict counter arguments. So then you would have <clears throat> green and red are the supporting arguments, and green are the supporting arguments, and red are the counter arguments. The, the red also has this minus there, right? If you look up at the top of this red. Uh, structure you have a minus and a line which shows that this is support to be a counter argument and then you have the the uh, thing you want to prove right the contention is means the, the conclusion of this whole thing right uh, helmets should be compulsory for cyclists this is what you what you want to prove and then you have arguments supporting this and you have arguments against that and um, now, this is a lot of text that I don't think we need to read all this. It's just about how to map this uh, here. So uh, have a look. Stop the video. Have a look at this and see if you see how the red bit is a counter argument. Okay. These are all taken from the Internet. Down there is the source. Okay. So you can mark counter arguments. You're putting a minus i and at the end of the arrow, arrow right, in this, in this kind of um, graphic. You can do this with the other style we saw before, too. Just put a minus sign at the tip of the arrow. So, right with the, with the other style. So now when we want to diagram a text, then uh, you could do it in this way, that you first use brackets to separate the individual statements in the text, right? That the point is to not write the whole text again. You have a piece of text and you want to diagram it without having to copy it. So you would use brackets, which you can insert onto the printed text, right, to support the statements. Then you number the statements. Then you circle the logical connectives and other structural words indicating conclusions and so on. So you would circle... Um, you would circle uh, and, you would circle or, and other words like that. Uh, and then you add any logical indicators that are left out. Right? Sometimes some logical indicators like conclusions, for example, right? Therefore and so on are left out. Uh, premises might be left out, so then you have to add those. You add any missing or hidden premises and conclusions. And then you draw your diagram. Okay, so let's do that, see how it looks. This is from Wikipedia. You have an argument and you see the different steps. So first, uh, the person who did this diagramming here added these brackets. So you see the red brackets have been added. Then they numbered their brackets. There's a one, meaning the bracket after it is number one. There's a two, meaning the bracket after it is number two, and so on. Three, four, five, six. There's six uh, different statements here. Then you have four and because. These are marked um, the structural words, including conclusions and so on. Uh, add anything left out. This would be the four in the middle here, and the fourth line is a red four. This has been added um, because it is not there. It's a, it's a marker indicating that um, there is a reason uh, following. And uh, yeah, and that's it. And now we draw the diagram, right? And you can uh, 
if you look at this perhaps you should uh, perhaps stop it here and look at it <coughs> and see how the diagram follows from these and, and number one is missing in the diagram, right? Because number one is a counter argument, although something and then something, something, right? So the one is a counter argument to the whole thing. So it's not actually supporting the conclusion and therefore it's not here. Okay? You could, if you wanted, you could add it with a minus. Okay. The HKU think resource now uses a slightly different way of drawing argument maps. Uh, the structure is the same. Only the way of drawing the arrows is different, and I think it's more confusing. Uh, it's not as good uh, because they have single premise, single conclusion. Okay, this is easy to understand, right? You have a premise number two, you have conclusion number one. Um, then we have these co-premises, again, like before, right? Premises that only together are premises. You have to think of them as an end, as being added together. Uh, but you see that this way of drawing it doesn't make it so clear that these have to work together. Uh, it is if you see that they go into the same arrow uh, about halfway down, but uh, it is not as clear as putting them above a line with a plus in between, right? This this is more uh, obvious. And especially if you look at the next thing, uh, these are independent premises now connected with an OR, uh, 2 OR, 3, lead to 1. And you see that the difference to that is pretty small, right? It's only that in this case you don't have this common uh, piece of line um, that goes to 3, but instead they both go separately to 1 in this case, right? So this is, as a, as a graphic representation, it's much more ambiguous, right? If this is drawn less carefully by a human being in an examination, for example, under a situation of stress, uh, this will be difficult to to draw um, so that you make it uh, clear what is happening. Um, you can do it, but it will be more challenging to draw this precisely than the other thing, right? What we saw before, this is easier to draw. Uh, this is perhaps good for a machine. If you have a computer program drawing these things, then it they turn out all right every time, right? But if you have a human, um, it's more challenging. Uh, you can have one reason and multiple conclusions also, of course. You can also have this in the other um, diagramming style. You would just draw different arrows. Um, this is the case here. And uh, now you could try it, you know, create an argument map from this. This computer can think, so it is conscious. Since we should not kill any conscious being, we should not switch it off. Okay, stop here for a moment. Do it yourself. Create an argument map. Perhaps you should try both styles. First try the one, then try the other style. Go back in this video if you want to, to make sure that you know how to do that. And uh, then, you know, create it and have a look at it. Okay? So here is the solution now. Um, this computer can think. We number it. Number one. Uh, it is conscious. is number two. Since we should not kill any conscious being, it's three. And four, we should not switch it off. Uh, this is an example from the HKU Think resource again, right? So you have um, this um, map here, right? One supports two, so two is a kind of subconclusion. Two and three together only support four. This is why their arrows uh, come together in the middle here instead of going separately to four, so they are co premises that you need to be taken together to support the final conclusion. Make sure that you understand why this has to be drawn in this way. We can have more complex arguments. Mary cannot come to the party because her scooter is broken. Peter also cannot come because he has to pick up his new hat. I did not invite my other friends, so none of my friends will come to the party. So do this yourself again. Try to draw it in one of the styles we talked about. Okay, here it is. First rewrite it in standard form, right? It's, it's easier to rewrite it first to see where things belong and which are the premises and where there are missing premises and so on. Mary cannot come to the party. Second, Mary's scooter is broken. Third, Peter cannot come to the party. Fourth, Peter has to pick up his new hat. Five, I did not invite my other friend. Six, conclusion, none of my friends will come to the party. And then you get a conclusion uh, or no, a structure, an argument map, you know, like that down there, where 
2 supports 1, so because Mary's scooter is broken, therefore Mary cannot come to the party, so this is a sub-conclusion. 4. Peter has to pick up his new hat, therefore Peter cannot come to the party. 4 uh, leads to 3. 3 is another uh, sub-conclusion, intermediate conclusion. Then you have 5. I did not invite my other friends. And only these three together as co-premises lead to 6. None of my friends will come to the party, which is the ultimate conclusion. Many people think that having a dark tan is attractive, but the fact is that too much exposure to the sun is very unhealthy. It has been shown that sunlight can cause premature aging of the skin. Ultraviolet rays in the sun might also trigger skin cancer. So create an argument map for this. Okay. Here is the solution. Now, this is much simpler than you would perhaps think, right? Because... Um, sentence one is not related to the conclusion at all, right? Many people think that having a dark tan is attractive is not related to the conclusion at all. The conclusion is two, but the fact that too much exposure to the sun is very unhealthy, but this is not supported at all or, or even uh, is not a counter-argument uh, um, by, by one, and one is not also not a counter-argument. So there's no relationship between one and two, right? And therefore, we can just leave it out, right? And you end up with only three and four leading to the conclusion two. If Mary is here, then Peter should be here as well. It follows that if Peter is not here, Mary is also absent. And indeed, Peter is not here, so most likely Mary is not around. Create an argument map for that. Um, and again, um, you get an argument map like this. I think this should be obvious, right, where this comes from and why it looks like that. These are very easy examples. Here's a longer one. Marriage is becoming unfashionable. Divorce rate is at an all-time high. And living together without being married is increasingly presented in a positive manner in the media. Movies are full of characters who live together and unwilling to commit to a lifelong partnership. Even newspaper columnists recommend people to live together for an extended period before marriage in order to test their compatibility. So now here, identify the conclusion, identify the premises, identify the intermediate conclusions, and then try to draw a map. Okay, so here we are. Um, this looks like that. Marriage is becoming a fashionable is the ultimate conclusion. Divorce rate is at an all-time high is a premise that supports that conclusion independently. Living together without being married is increasingly presented in a positive manner in the media is another premise that leads to the conclusion independently. And this premise itself is supported by number four and five, the other two statements here. All another exercise. All university students should study critical thinking. After all, critical thinking is necessary for surviving in the new economy as we need to adapt to rapid changes and make critical use of information in making decisions. Also, critical thinking can help us reflect on our values and purposes in life. Finally, critical thinking helps us improve our study skills. Now, create an argument map from that. And here we are. This is again from the HKU resource, right? So all these, right? All these. Um, I don't have a way to um, paint these diagrams um, so nicely. So these are all copied from the HKU uh, Think uh, website uh, together with their diagrams, right? Um, so again, you should you should easily see how this uh, comes together. One is the ultimate conclusion. Two, four, and five are four and five are ultimate premises. Two is an intermediate conclusion that is supported by the ultimate premise. Three. So here we have more exercises from previous lectures and exams. Um, the world would be better if there was a single world government. You remember this, we talked about that um, uh, somewhere before. Um, when we were talking about argument structure, right? We talked about that. Now you can create an argument map like that we saw before. So just, just do it for a moment. Um, we don't do it now here, um, but 
Here are some considerations. So the conclusion is the world would be better if there was a single world government. Does this speaker believe that there would be more administrative costs? Yes. Does the belief support the conclusion? No. This is a counter-argument, so now you know um, how to draw that. And yeah, that's it. I don't, I don't have the drawing here, but you can easily do it at home, and we can do it uh, also at the um, tutorial session uh, so that we can all see it. Okay, to punish people merely for what they have done would be unjust because the forbidden act might have been an accident for which the person who did it cannot be held to blame. These are all from the previous um, exams and previous presentation. So again, analyze that, create an argument map, and come back. So this is the discussion we had back then when we talked about argument structure. Uh, there's a missing premise here. You have to add a premise, um, something uh, like that, right? It's unjust to punish people if they cannot be blamed for an act. And now you can draw the argument map, including the hidden premise, which is uh, necessary to make this whole thing valid. Okay, here is another exercise, uh, the democracy exercise, again from the preview session. Present the argument in standard form, identify the final conclusion and so on, and draw an argument map. Again, I leave this to you to do. Um, here is the analysis of the argument itself, right, the conclusion, so Hong Kong should have a democracy. If you want to know more about that, how to analyze this, then go back to the presentation where we talk about argument analysis, right? Here it's only about the actual drawing of it. So here is the counter argument, right? You don't need to have that, uh, the red one. You can leave it out um, because we don't need to draw the counter argument, but we can, of course, if we want, right? Here yeah, you draw it uh, with a negative, with a minus, to show that it's a counter argument. Okay, so what did we learn today? We talked about how to map arguments, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, also have this HKU resource, right? This is the thing I'm referring to all the time. Most of the um, of the arguments are taken from there. And the, all the all these drawings are taken from there. So go there, please. Um, uh, read more details uh, about how to do it over there. Um, we will meet in the tutorial. You can ask what questions in the tutorial. I, I notice now that I promised you something in the beginning which I didn't do, um, which is to give you a more practical approach for your everyday thinking. Uh, this we didn't do here, but uh, we will talk about it um, later in a later session when we talk about uh, the arguments um, let me think when we talk about animal rights and the debate because you know you will have to do a debate and when we talk about this debating and how to structure your debates and how to think about animal rights then I will show you a map that is uh, more uh, comprehensive and more useful in, in practice to do when you try to prepare your argument. Okay, so this comes, but it comes a little later. Okay, so thank you for the moment um, and see you in the tutorial where we can answer your questions. Okay, so bye-bye from here.